In this video, we're going to be looking at the different types of fossils. I love fossils. Uh, I have a ton of them. We'll be doing a lab where you'll be handling the different types of fossils. A big part of your exam for this unit will be being able to identify the six different types of fossils. So this video will be very important and the labs that we do where we practice it will be important. So let's get right into it. Remember that fossils are our third branch of evidence that uh, evolutionists will use to argue for their point of macroevolution. What is a fossil? A fossil is any preserved evidence of an organism. It's, uh, it's like a snapshot in time, usually of the organism's death. And there'll be lots of different types that we'll look at in a second. But it's some kind of preserved evidence that, you know, that organism is dead, probably died a long time ago. And it's some kind of evidence that it existed at one point. One thing that's important for you to understand is that most organisms decompose before they die. And so there's a lot of organisms that don't leave behind fossils. You, when you die, will probably not leave behind a fossil of your existence that's going to stick around for very much, uh, you know, very, very long at all. A uh, classic example, and we'll look at this in the lab, is a megalodon. Megalodon, scientists believe, was a massive shark, maybe 70 feet long. The only evidence that we have that it ever existed was we find these massive preserved fossilized teeth. And the reason for that, scientists believe, is that shark, this shark that's extinct, like all sharks, had a cartilage, a skeleton, the only part of their body that's hard enough to fossilize are the teeth. And so if you imagine that, you know, a 70 foot long shark, and it almost left no evidence behind it all that it existed, well if that's possible then, you know, smaller organisms, you could easily imagine that, you know, they might not have left any fossils at all. We may never know that they existed. That's the ideas here. That's an important, because in a later video, we'll talk about how there's holes in the fossil record. And paleontologists will acknowledge that there's holes. And this is one of the big ways they try to get out of that, is the fact that we know there's holes in the fossil record because most organisms don't fossilize. And so we know the fossil record's incomplete. So where's the controversy with fossils? Why is it that they're controversial? So the fact that they exist is not controversial. One of the reasons why I do a fossil lab in my class, besides the fact that I just think it's cool that you, know, you can handle one of these fossils for yourself, is that I had a student, one of my first years teaching, and thought, well, and they said, well, is it possible that fossils are just maybe misshapen rocks, weirdly shaped rocks? And, and the simple answer to that is no. Like that fossil right there, that is clearly a leaf. There's no way that that just formed somehow, uh, you know, just weird mineralization or something. So um, it's quite clear that these fossils exist. It's quite clear that they are, you know, left behind by some organism, many of which we know are extinct because we would notice if they were still around. But what are they evidence of? That's the controversial part. And how old are they? That's the other part. So what are they evidence of? Are they evidence of a global flood and catastrophe that wiped out lots of organisms, buried them rapidly in sediment, and caused them to be preserved? Or are they evidence of vast periods of geologic time? Or were they laid down quickly and are not that old? Or are they thousands, millions, and millions of years old? And so that's the controversy. It's how you interpret the evidence, like all the other pieces of evidence that I've shown you. So the fact that they exist, not controversial, how do you interpret the evidence? And we'll look at that uh, as far as dating, how do they date these fossils in other videos. For this video, again, we're just going to talk about what are these six different types of fossils that we see. The way I'm going to teach you the six different types is on the next page you've got a uh, window pane, but for now I just want you to write in above this picture. These are the six types. I actually own all six and we'll look at them in the fossil lab. And on the quiz I'll be showing you pictures and you'll have to identify what the different fossils are. So the different kinds, the first one, a trace fossil. The key part is that you understand that this is not the organism itself. It's something that the organism left behind. Like for example, footprints, whether it's human footprints or dinosaur footprints or whatever, it's not the actual dinosaur itself that we're finding a fossil of. It's an impression that it made. It's a footprint that it left behind. Molds and casts, this will make a little more sense when we actually start to look at it, but essentially the idea with the molds and casts is you get an organism that died, something with like a hard shell, for example, uh, it lands on the bottom of the sea and makes an impression. There's your mold. That seafloor then hardens and is filled in with more mud which hardens and that forms the cast. And so you get these 3D impressions uh, that are called mold and cast. Replacements. Replacements are called replacement fossils because the bone or the shell or whatever it is has actually been replaced with stone. So when in my lab that we'll be doing and you handle like a piece of dinosaur bone or a tooth you're not actually holding a tooth anymore. You're not actually holding a bone anymore. What you're holding is rock that has replaced where that tooth used to be. And so uh, it's a very accurate 
reflection of what the tooth actually looked like, but you're not actually holding a tooth, you're holding rock. Petrified or permineralized is the biggest one for this is just petrified wood. Uh, scientists think that the pores of the tree get filled in with sediment and you end up getting petrified wood. Uh, one of the ones for trace, which is kind of cool, feces. Uh, I do have in the lab, we'll look at uh, what's called dinosaur corporolite. So we'll look at actually uh, essentially preserved poop. Again, it's not the organism itself, but it's something left behind. Amber, maybe the most famous one because of the Jurassic Park movies. It's you know tree sap that's believed to have then been hardened, and sometimes that tree sap uh, captures little critters inside of it. There's our fossil, amber fossil. An original material, this is the actual organism itself. So maybe it's a human mummy or a frozen mammoth, but it's something that we dig up that's the actual organism preserved, its original skin, its original hair, and so forth. A couple more examples of trace fossils. So these are actually called stomach stones. So imagine if you find like a gigantic dinosaur uh, fossil that's, that's articulated, that's the whole you know, big long neck dinosaur. And in the midsection where the stomach would be, you find these stones that are like beautifully polished, like they've been rubbing against each other. Well, these are evidences that this organism ate these stones and used these stones to break down their food, like actually many organisms do today. And then the reason why is because you know, they end up being polished and, and smooth, like the ones that we see in organisms today that do that. Another one, you've got a bone of some other organism, so this is actually a fossil for some other organism, but in that bone, you see gnaw marks from a rodent. So that then is a trace fossil of whatever rodent it was that left behind these gnaw marks in that bone. The rest of these notes will be on the window pane that you have on the next page of your study guide. And remember for this window pane, we're gonna do some drawing up here. And you'll have something to write down here. So save the bottom, I'd say third of the window pane in each one. In this first box, here's what we're going to draw. We're going to start with kind of a half circle like that. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, another half circle kind of right here. Let's make sure we make the big toe on the inside where it is. One, two, three, four, five. And one more right here. One, two, three, four, five. Look at this amazing artwork right here. Very impressive. And then it's just going to go off the screen right there. And what we've got there then are footprints. And this is a type of trace fossil. A trace fossil is something the organism leaves behind, like poop, like that fossilized poop. Footprints. And this is a big one for you too. Highlight, circle, star. Anything that looks like a 2D photograph. We're going to see lots of examples of that in the lab. And uh, it'll be on your quiz. You need to know anything. If it looks like a two-dimensional photo, then we're going to call it a trace. The next one's going to be a little bit interesting. So we're going to draw a mold and cast fossil, and for that we're going to draw something that, that, frankly, you may not really know what it is, but once you see it in the lab, you'll recognize it. So we're going to start with something like that, and then from there, we're going to draw kind of a large thing there, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then come down here. What we're going to do is we're just going to connect these lines together. So what we're drawing is actually a creature that we find lots of mold and cast fossils of. It's an organism called a trilobite, and there's a lot of little dots. Their eyes are compound eyes, kind of like those of insects. And what we've got there is a mold and cast fossil. Now molds and cast fossils, imagine what you've got is an impression of the organism is left behind, that's the mold, and then it's filled with our cast. And again, this, this picture, this trilobite, it may not make 100% sense right now, but after we've seen a bunch of them in the lab, you'll totally get it. You'll also, what's cool is I have some molds and casts where you actually get both pieces that you can kind of put together and you can see, oh wow, they, and you can get an idea for how they form, the mold and cast fossils. The next fossil we're going to look at is called a replacement fossil, and for that we're going to start off with something that looks kind of like a shoe. And then we'll draw that below it, and then we'll draw the eye socket there, and then some teeth. What we've got here, this is our replacement fossil. Now in our replacement fossil, bone and teeth have become rock. And we'll see lots of examples of this in the lab, but essentially what you're dealing with is 
you know, this Tyrannosaurus rex skull that you'll see in a museum is not actually bone anymore. It's not teeth anymore. It's actually all rock. This next one, there's going to be a lot to it because we're drawing uh, petrified wood. And so to draw that, what we're going to do, we'll start off a line like that. And then a line kind of like that. And then we're going to kind of zigzag it in like that. And there is our tree. And to make sure that we definitely know that it's a tree, we'll draw on that owl hole right now. You Okay, definitely couldn't be mistaken for broccoli or something. It's definitely a, a tree. And we're going to draw an arrow. And what we're going to draw is that the trunk of the tree, or maybe a large branch, has been petrified. And so to do that, we're going to draw kind of a knot, even lines, connect them with a circle. And the fact that our circles are not even is kind of a good thing. We're just trying to make them kind of a little wavy. And we are drawing the rings then inside of those. Just like you'd see like in the trunk of a tree. And then we're going to draw some of the like, bark. And what we've got there then is a petrified piece of wood. So a petrified, whenever you see the word petrified in my class, we're basically just going to be doing with petrified wood. The other fossils can be petrified. And what happens is the pores get filled with mineral and you get that petrified wood. Now we've got amber. And for amber, we're going to start off with kind of an odd shape, you know, kind of not quite circle. Draw kind of whatever you feel. And what's cool about amber is inside of it, you can get insects. And so the insect that I'm going to draw, like all insects, it's got three body segments, all the legs, Attach that middle segment, put an antenna up there, so you kind of line there, compound eye, and the wing, and what we've got there is a mosquito trapped in amber. With amber, usually a small insect or some other very small animal, I've seen ambers with, you know, frogs and other lizards, things like that. They get covered in sap. They get stuck in the sap, buried in the sap, and then the sap turns to amber. Probably the most famous fossil uh, from its use in Jurassic Park, of course. The next one is going to be original material, and for that we're going to draw a mummy. And so for our mummy, we'll just draw a person's head, and their arms, and their legs. And then we'll just draw the wrapping. And what we've got there then is original material. Original material fossil is the organism's actual original, you know, real bone, their teeth, their hair. Some examples, a frozen mammoth, a mummy. Here are some pictures of the different types of fossils we've got here. These are dinosaur footprints that the boy's standing in. These would be trace. This one looks like a 2D photo. It would also be considered trace. This would be a mold and cast. Petrified wood, so petrified, obviously amber. These are the original tusks of that mammoth, so this is the original material. And this dinosaur bone is now stone. There's our replacement. Now we're going to do something where I'm just going to go through a bunch of pictures, and you're going to be kind of quizzed to see if you know what kind of fossil it is, which are the six types. This will be a big chunk of your actual real quiz that will be happening uh, in the class. I'll put up the PowerPoint slides of the fossils, and you'll have to identify what kind of fossil it is. And the fossil lab that we do in class should help with this as well. So here we go. What kind of fossil do we have there? This would be replacement. What was a skull and teeth is now bone. Replacement. How about this one? Well, it looks like a 2D photograph, yeah? That one's trace. How about that one? That is molds and casts. This is that trilobite that we drew the kind of terrible picture of. That's what they really look like. How about this one? There's a frozen woolly mammoth baby. This is the original deal, original material. That's his original skin, the organs were in there, etc. Petrified wood. Clearly this one's an amber. This would be an amber with maybe a stick insect stuck inside. Looks like a 2D photograph, yeah? That makes it trace.
Amber, obviously. Again, what looks like dinosaur bone. This is not bone and teeth anymore. This is rock replacement. Trace, footprints. How about these two? Hopefully you're getting these are molds and casts. There's another one of those trilobites. This is a seashell that's had it happen. What about that one? Looks like a 2D photograph of some leaves. That is a trace. This one might be a little bit tougher. Also looks like a two-dimensional photograph of a fish, right? Trace. Amber, obviously. How about this one? Give me a second on this one. Notice this one has got kind of two parts. So it's got the impression part, and it's also got a part that's been three uh, filled in kind of three-dimensionally. This is a mold and cast. This would be the mold part. This would be the cast part. And I have some fossils like this where you actually get both pieces, which is pretty cool. And now our final fossil, hopefully realizing that this is original material, right? This uh, skin and bone and all that is still there. This is the original material. That's what the person was made of. So I hope that video was helpful, and I'll see you next time.